We close here tonight with more unusual weather now in the northeast. South Australia is in the grip of another December heat wave and it's forecast to continue well into the new year. That massive flooding is part of the wild weather in recent weeks. Forecast says a warning of more chaos as fierce storms and floods continue to batter the southern United States. One local official said today, nobody that is living has ever seen anything like this. Tonight, a major wildfire in Southern California. As the flames exploded, this family had just minutes now. to evacuate. Uh, we're probably going to head to Santa Barbara. Um, I'm 29 years old. I don't think there's ever been a fire. This hillside here. In the forecast for a storm that is being called an historic blizzard. Entire communities have been devastated by this deluge across vast swathes of northern England. The country hit by a series of six freak storms. Some York residents told Sky News this was the worst flood they've seen in 15 years. Historic winter floods have killed at least 22 people this week in the Midwest. It has washed away homes, highways, that is Highway 141, and shut down water treatment plants. You're in a scenario that no one here has ever, ever been in. I mean, if that river hits the targets that are predicted right now at that Chester gauge, that is higher than the Mississippi River has ever been. Millions are facing more severe weather this morning as a series of deadly storms punish parts of the country. Storms in the Midwest, the South and Plains have killed at least 43 people. This tornado captured near Garland where 11 people were killed shows transformers igniting as the powerful storm blew through. This is the worst I think anybody's seen it. They are images that seem to defy December. Floodwaters raging through Missouri and deadly tornadoes tearing through the south. The house is gone, but we're still here. Well, unusually balmy weather blankets the northeast over Christmas. On extreme weather that saw people die in the rare tornadoes, flood and wildfires has uh, torn across the earth. Heavy rains in Paraguay, Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay have led officials to evacuate tens of thousands of residents. And here we are, 2016, and we've got earthquakes to wake us up. We're having another earthquake right now. The uh, studio lights are shaking as we speak. Still we just shaking. had a big earthquake. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that yeah. one was a big one. So you saw it here live. Wow. Another one. Wow. We've had several in the Edmond area over the past few days. Sure have. We've had, had six. Yeah, I had, had a big one a couple of days ago. Cause we'll be checking the USGS. A lot of you are probably switching on your television right now since you were awake and or you're still up from New Year's. <laughs> Could be. No residents awake early this morning in the metro. It was the second strong quake in less than a week. This latest earthquake has left a lot of people shaken up. She looked out the window to see the walls coming down and it wasn't over. It didn't feel like a sh rumble. It felt like somebody's like, you know, like picked up our house and threw us like boom. The quakes aren't just getting stronger, but closer. Closer to more populated areas, which means more damage and higher risk. We begin with that earthquake that jolted people from their beds across the lower mainland late last night. The quake struck near Victoria, but was felt right across Metro Vancouver. At 4.8, it wasn't the size of this quake so much as where it hit, the most densely populated part of the province. Seismologists placed the epicenter near Victoria. Felt over a very, very wide area. It's the strongest shaking uh, in this region uh, 
for the past 15 years. It was a good one. I haven't felt one that strong in a while. She is one of thousands of people all across three counties here in Southern California that felt at a 4.4 earthquake that was centered near Devore and followed by more than 30 aftershocks. Yesterday's earthquake, the building was evacuated and inspected. Well, coincidentally, a couple of weeks ago, a report came out that said San Bernardino City Hall needs some minor work to be done to make it completely earthquake safe. And a lot of people here knew about that report, so you can understand when the ground started shaking why there were some jittery nerves. Evet yer sarı yer maslak tarih 30 30 Ocak saat kaç kardeşim saat 12:30 yaklaşık iki buçuk üç saattir garip sesler gelmekte dinliyorsunuz sesleri. Şu anda doğru çıktı sesler akıl alacak gibi değil. So you're just going to see immorality, you're going to see perversion, the increase of homosexuality, and also we're seeing major pushes on transgenderism. It's amazing to see the reports that are coming out there. According to the Commission on Human Rights, landlords, employers, and businesses are being warned they could face fines if they purposely call a transgender woman him or Mr. when she prefers a female title. Also if she is banned from using a woman's restroom. The guidelines also say dress codes requiring men to wear ties and women to wear skirts are discriminatory. Area school removed a book about transgender issues from its curriculum. But as Newsreads Keely Arthur reports, a group of Mount Horeb community members still wanted to hear the story. For as long as I can remember, my favorite color has been pink. A children's book reading is exactly what you'd expect at a public library. Most of all, I love mermaids. But the subject of Wednesday night's story was something that some might not find so typical. The doctor spoke to my parents and I heard the word transgender for the very first time. Filling almost every space at the Mount Horeb Public Library, hundreds gathered to hear I Am Jazz, a story about a child who is transitioning from a boy to a girl. Being jazz felt much more like being me. And we say these things in these in these briefings not to scare people, but to inform, to educate what's happening around the world. Uh, it serves as a wake-up call for those who are not paying attention to some of these news reports uh, or those who are ignorant of the signs of the time. And the important thing is we say each week, you know, to be ready, stay ready, be prepared for whatever might happen, and most importantly, keep your eyes on Jesus. I think we're at a point where you don't need cash for most of what you need to do today already. So for us, it's just it's a nice transition. It shows that we're sort of, you know, on top of the trend as well. The move over to the 
paperless receipts, everything of the sorts. Uh, you know, on busy weekends like Black Friday, they were actually pulling people out of line with one of our mobile point of sale solutions and asking people if they wanted to go paperless. So if you're willing to get an email receipt, you could jump the line, pay with a card, and be out of here faster. This is something that we're starting to see uh, how the, the world and the economies around the world are going to a cashless society. Previously, I'd always said that around the year 2030, Sweden would in effect become cashless, meaning that cash would cease to play any real role in society. But when I look at the developments over the last two years, I actually now think it will happen faster than that. Biometrics is the key that defines us and uniquely identifies who we are. By digitizing and applying biometrics into the world, Suprema securely protects it information, assets, and people across communities. Biometrics and security at home or at work, sites large or small, even in digital spaces. Suprema's world-leading algorithm and technology protects the world with the power of true identity. Suprema's innovation will explore infinite possibilities and overcome challenges. To introduce technologies that will lead the world to the next frontier. Lagano, so you there, brzo, on the trunk. You give a card, and that's it, and you pay for it. How simple is that? Very nice, absolutely.